Collecting candle berries. And now you estimate that you have maybe 2,000 of them. What the And you estimate that you might have somewhere around 2,000 of these exotic berries. Not really exotic, but still. You need to use cool words, you know. And then somebody asks you for a more exact number. And then you concede and say, about 1,800. And then they ask you for an even more exact number. And you say, I guess 1,840? And then they ask you for the most precise number you can give. And you say, 1,844. So we just went from 2000 to 1844, just like that. Now, the thing is, these all get closer and closer to the truth. So they're like different levels of truth. Now, this is getting more accurate, accurate and precise. But what if we went the other way? What if we got less precise and less precise and less precise? That, my friends, is called rounding. Oh, goodness. So, now, rounding is basically when you say, hmm, let's say you have the example of 46. How would you round that? Would you round it up or round down? Well, to do that, we'll have to take a look at the number line we learned about in the previous episode. So, 46, let's put 45 over here, 44, oh goodness, what have I done? 47 over here, 44, 43, and let's just go all the way until 40. 42, 41, and 40. And then you have the other way, going until 50, 48, 49, 50. And so now, which one is 46 closer to? 50 or 40? Now, why are 40 and 50 count as 10? Well, because they can be perfectly represented by groups of tens without any leftovers. So for example, we can represent 40 as four tens and 50 as five tens. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. But if we took something in between, say 44, then we could have to represent it with four tens in the leftover of four ones. So we can't have leftovers here at Berry Science Lab. So that's why these count as tens. So now, which one is 46 closer to, 40 or 50? Well, let's see by stepping. So let's see how many steps away 40 is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Or you could just say, what's 46 minus 40? Six. What about the other way around? How close is 46 to 50? Boom, boom, boom. Now since 50 is greater than 46, we say 50 minus 46 is four. And now we see it only took four steps over here while it took six steps over here. So now, that means that 46 is closer to 50 than it is 40. So to get more accurate while still rounding, we'll have to round up. Why is it called rounding up? Wait, I'm wrong color. Why is it called rounding up? 
Well, because 50 is greater than 46. Well, if we were rounding down, 40 is less than 46. And so, since we since the estimation is greater than the original amount, it's called rounding up. Now, let's get an example where we round down. So let's say we have 320, and we wanted to get it to the nearest 100. So, on the number line, we could have, we could have, let's say, 300, 310, 320, 330, 340, 350, 360, 370, 380, 390, and 400. Sorry that that took a bit long. So now, let's see how many hops it takes to get from 320 to 400 compared to 300. Or we could just do a subtraction problem. Now since 320 is greater than 300, we take 320, write it first, and then subtract 300 to get how many steps it would take to get it. Remember, these big steps are just 10 little steps. Since the difference between um, two things on the number line is 10. For 320 and 310, have a difference of 10. So going two steps would mean you have a difference of 10 plus 10, 20. Now on the other side you have 400. Since 400 is bigger, we write 400 first and then 320. That's 80. Now which one is greater? 80 or 20? 80. And so we choose the one that's the closest, or in other words, has the least amount of steps to get to which is 20. And so, that means that 320, for rounding to the nearest 100, remember, that is so, because we can split these up into perfect hundreds without having any leftovers. So, 100, 100, 100, 100. So if we're rounding to the nearest hundred, then 300 is closer than 400, which means that we will pick 300 over 400. So if we were rounding 320 to the nearest hundred, then we would get 300. Now, there is a very weird what if you have something in the middle? Now, let's say we're rounding to the nearest 10 over here once again. So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And let's see. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, 15 is in the middle over here. And so, it should take the same amount of steps to get here as it should to get here. Well, for that, we've devised a handy rule. If you're in doubt, round up. Doesn't exactly rhyme, but what's the point? So, that means that if you have a digit 
then it's five, then you will automatically round up. So this gives us a handy rule. So let's take the 10 digit. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you see any of these, round down. If you see any of these, round up. So, now, while rounding, you have to pay very close attention to what the question tells you. So let's say you want to round 94 to the nearest 10. This is 94, okay, so 94 to the nearest 10, while 94 to the nearest 100. Now, to the nearest 10, means that we're either going to round it down to 90 or round it up to 100. Now, 94 is closer to 90 than it is, uh, that wouldn't be so accurate. 94 is closer to 90 than it is 100. Now, what does it mean rounding to the nearest 10? Well, this is the ones place, this is the tens place. So when rounding to the nearest ten, everything, it is, uh, everything that is to the east or to the right of the place that they're talking about, the tens in this case, will be zeroed. There are some exceptions, however, so I will show. So now, Ninety-four, of course, is closer to ninety. What the? Huh? Huh? Oh, sorry. Um. Yeah. Yes, it is me. Sorry. Uh, twenty-seven. Good. There we go. Mm -hmm. And this is six. And what about ninety-four to the nearest hundred? Well, we can't round down anymore. 94 is closer, much closer to 100 than it is 0. This is a difference of 94, while well, this is only a difference of 6. And so, that means that we're going to round up. Sometimes you've got to regroup stuff. So, there is no hundreds place to be seen over here. So, what we're going to do is, since we rounded up to 100, we're just going to make this equal to 100. So, we're going to make a new one over here and then zero everything else. Or, if you had, say, 294, and you wanted to do it to the nearest 100, then you would see 294 is much closer to 300. So, it's much closer to 300 than to 200. So, in special cases like these, what you can do is increase whatever's in the hundreds place by one and then zero everything else. And so, <clears throat> that means that for example, with 94, there's a zero in the hundreds place. Just think of it as an imaginary zero because there are no hundreds. And then you zero everything else and add a one to the hundreds place. So, that's the basic system of rounding. Now you might ask, why would we want to become less precise when we would always want to be as precise as possible? Well, sometimes you just don't need the level of information. Sometimes it's too hard to work with that level of information. 
Like for example, you took 367 and uh, 495, it would be much harder to multiply than say, I don't know, 370 and 500. Or say 400 and 500. These two are much easier to multiply than these two, aren't they? Why? Sometimes we need real names. Sometimes we uh, don't need the level of precision we have. Sometimes, um, well, the level of precision is so unnecessary it gets in the way of what we're actually trying to do. And so, this is why we need rounding. Rounding is a very necessary thing. So, let's bring us back to the title. This is what, this is rounding. This is basic math. I am Professor Sabrina Isaac Berry, and we'll see you next time. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. The Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.